This series of tests carried out on a normal low voltage line at Camberwell shows clearly the amount and trajectory of particles emitted as a result of the conductors clashing. The incandescent particles are visible even in broad daylight and it can be seen that in some cases they reach the ground with sufficient heat to cause a fire under the right fuel and weather conditions. For consumers who have low voltage mains running across their property, it's important to note that the same phenomena can occur. It is for this reason that the Commission is embarking on a program to ensure that the installations are correct. A further series of tests were carried out under laboratory conditions at Fisherman's Bend to help determine more about the particles emitted when conductors clash. Although the particles produced by the clashing appear quite large, in the majority of cases they are less than one millimetre in diameter. A few particles, however, were as large as two millimetres in diameter. The experiments proved that particles could reach the ground hot enough to start a fire. Under the conditions that existed in the western districts of the state on the 12th of February 1977, with wind gusts up to 65 kilometres an hour, the particles could cause fires up to 30 metres downwind of the clashing conductors. When a tree branch contacts a high voltage line, the effect is even more startling. In this final test, a six foot length of sugar gum is used to simulate the effect of a limb falling across a 12.7 kV conductor. Sparking commences within a few seconds of the limb touching the conductor. The limb then catches fire and eventually the conductor strands break and the burning limb and broken conductor fall to the ground. In this test, they set fire to brown paper on the laboratory floor. In the field, the effects could be much worse if conditions were conducive to a fire. It took only 40 seconds from the time the branch touched the wires until it fell in flames to the ground. <laughs>